in this lesson, we're going to solve past questions on upper and lower bounds of measurement or numbers. Recall from our previous class, we solved a lot of problems on that. Or oh, we had a class on upper and lower bounds of number. That is how to determine the upper and lower bounds of number and how to use upper and lower bounds of number in calculations. So if you are not taking that very topic, that very class rather, we encourage you to go and take it. So let's use that knowledge to solve some IGCSE pass questions. I have one here which says, a room has a width of 4.55 meter correct to two decimal places and a length of 3.984 meters correct to three decimal places. By considering bounds, find the area of the room to a suitable degree of accuracy. So to solve a question like this, we need to get the upper and lower bound of the width. We also get the upper and lower bound of the length. And then calculate the area. From our previous class, the easiest way to get the upper and lower bound of the number is to represent that number or that measurement on a number line. So for the width, if I represent that on the number line, I'm going to have something like this. The left, as in this is my width of 4.55 meters. 4.55 meters. And the degree of accuracy is to two decimal places. So since the measurement is taken to two decimal places, that means the next measurement here will be 4.55. Five, six. And the one before the measurement in question, which is this, this is the width in question. The number that should come before it should be 4.454, uh, four, rather. 4.54. Four. Now, the lower bound of this number, or the width, is the number that lies between 4.54 and 4.55. And that number should be here. And we can easily get that by adding this number to this number, then divide by two. We are taking the average of these two numbers here. The lower bound, let me call it LB, will be 4.54 plus 4.55 divided by two. When we do that, let me use a calculator to make it easier. 4.54 plus 4.55. Then divided by 2 is 4.545. 4.545. That is the lower band. The upper band, on the other hand, let me call this LB. The upper bound is the number between the width itself that is 4.55 and 4.56. Let's call that UB, upper bound. You can get that by adding this number, the measurement itself, to this, divide by two, just like we did it for the lower bound. So upper bound, therefore, is 4.55. Plus 4.56 divided by 2. And that should give us 4.55 plus 4.56 and divided by 2 is 4.555. 4.55. So ninth, again I will represent on the number line. This is the length L. So the length is three point nine eight four 
to three decimal places. So since the measurement is to three decimal places, the next one should be 3.985. And the one before it should be 3.983. The lower one is the number in between. Let's call it UV. UV, uh, no, LV, not U. LV. With this number plus this number divided by two. Of course, if you are used to calibration, that should be 3.9835. Nice. This plus this divided by 2. If you want this. The upper band, which is here, UV. UV will be. This plus this divided by 2, which should be 3.9845. That is half of these two numbers here. So now that we know the upper and lower bound of the area, of the length and the width, rather, we can get the area. Area, the lower bound of area, let me call it LB, will be lower bound of the width multiplied by the lower bound of the length. So let me call it length, um, lower bound, let's call it LB. Then the width, the lower bound, let's call it LB also. Recall from our previous class, when we are doing any operation that has to do with multiplication, we multiply the lower bound together, multiply the upper bound together. So here we are trying to get the lower and the upper bound of the area. So we are going to multiply the lower bound of the length and the width to get the lower bound of the area. It will also multiply the upper bound of length and width to get the upper bound of the area. So that will be the lower bound of length is 3.9835 and multiply by the lower bound of the width. The lower bound of the width that is 4.5. When we multiply these two numbers together, 3.9835 multiplied by 4.545 is 18.11 approximately. 18.11. Meter square means it is area, and to get the upper bound of area, let me call it UB of area. Again, we multiply the upper bound of length by the upper bound of width. The upper bound of length is 3.9845. Point nine eight four five multiplied by the upper bound of width, which is four point five five five. Four point five five five. Three point nine eight four five multiplied by four point five 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 is eighteen point one five approximately. 18.15. Therefore, the area of this room lies between this 18.11 and 18.15. So, you see, by considering uh, bounds, find the area of the room to a suitable degree of accuracy. So, if I to represent this in terms of inequality, we we'll say that 18.15. 1, 1 is less than or equal to A, the area of the room, and the area of the room is less than 18.15 meter square. Let me put the meter square here. So any value between 18.11 to 18.15, 18.15 not inclusive, because the symbol here is less than, but this one is less than or equal to. 
to anything from here down to this place if the area of this room and that is how to solve a problem like this and that is five easy marks here from my GCSE. Okay, now let's move on to another first question. It says a set of books each have a width of a width x of 1.4 centimeter to the nearest millimeter. Write down the error interval for the width of one book. Okay, the error interval for the width of one book. This is the measurement of the width of the book. So we are to get the error interval. The error interval is the lower and the upper bound of that number. So the width S is 1.4 centimeter to the nearest millimeter. Why to the nearest millimeter? Because this point 4 here is actually in millimeter. It's one that is in centimeter. So since it's the nearest millimeter, that means the next value should be 1.5. 1.5.5 the nearest millimeter. The next, uh, the number that comes before 1.4 is 1.3. And then the lower bound is this number here, which should be the half of this, the average of these two. And that is 1.35. So lower bound is 1.35. Whenever you are not sure, add this number to this, then divide by two. The upper bound on the other hand is the number between 1.4 and 1.5 and that will be 1.45 and the question says write down the error interval so we have to express this in terms of inequality that means 1.35 is less than or equal to x the width and s is less than 1.45 what this means is the width of this book lies between 1.35 and 1.45 but 1.45 is not inclusive because if you run this up you're going to get 1.5 which is more than 1.4 but if you run this we are going to get exactly 1.4 so any number between 1.35 and b is not inclusive is the width of that book. So here is the error interval. The B part of the question is Kelvin's bookshelf has a length of 36 centimeters to the nearest centimeter. Calculate the maximum number of books that Kelvin can fit on this, on his shelf rather, on his shelf. Now, from our previous class, when we treated a division of upper and lower bounds, we are made to understand that to get the maximum value from a division, you divide the upper bound of the divisor or the dividend rather by the lower bound of the divisor. What do I mean? To get the maximum number of books that this shelf can hold, I will need to divide the upper bound of this 36 by the lower bound of this width of the book. That will give me the maximum number of books that this shelf can hold. So we need to get the upper bound of 36 centimeters to the nearest centimeter. As usual, let's represent that number on the number line. So 36 on the number line, since it's to the nearest centimeter, the next number should be 37. And the number before it is 35. Lower bound is the number in between, which is 35.5. And we call it LV. The lower bound is 35.5. Why the upper bound is the number between 36 and 37? And that number is 36.5. Okay, this is what we need in this case. The upper bound of 36 which is 36.5. Then we are going to divide this by the lower bound of the width of the book to get the maximum number of books that this shelf can hold. Therefore, the maximum number of books 
is equal to 36.5 divided by 1.35 1.35 divided by 1.35 is 27 approximately we, we cannot put points since there is no half book so we ignore anything that is not whole number here yeah? a shell cannot you cannot divide it between two half so and they say maximum so the maximum number of books that the shell can hold is 27 books to prove that this is the maximum if you divide this upper bound of this number by the upper bound of this. You see that the, 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 the answer will be less. So the point I'm trying to make, whenever I want to get the maximum value from a division, you divide the dividend by the lower bound of the measurement. And that will give you the maximum value from a division. Again, if you have not taken the class on upper and lower bounds, I treated the class in detail. So you can go and take that first. Before solving problems on the upper and lower bound. And let's go on to the final question for this class. It said the width, the weight, the view of a parcel is recorded as 440 gram to the nearest 10 gram. Write down the error interval for the weight of the parcel. Okay? The weight is recorded as 440 gram. And the degree of accuracy is to the nearest 10 gram. What does that mean? That is, the interval in the measurement is 10 gram each. So if I have 440 gram as the measurement, the next interval should be 450. That is what it means by to the nearest 10 gram. And the measurement before it should be 430. And so it goes like that, a difference of 10 because of the degree of accuracy is to the nearest 10 gram. So to write down the error interval of the measurement, what they are asking us to do in essence, is to get the upper bound and the lower bound of this measurement, 440, which is what the weight, let's put it weight W of the measurement. So the lower bound of this measurement is the number between 430 and 440, and that number we can get by adding 430 to 440, then divide the result by 2. And if you are used to calibration, you should know that should be what? 435. So the lower bound of this measurement is 435. Why the upper bound is the number that lies between 440 and 450. And that number is 445. Again, whenever you're not sure, add this number to this number, divide by 2. So the error interval, which is what it asks us to find, they're asking us to express this in terms of inequality. So 435, which is the lower bound, is less than or equal to the measurement, which is the weight, and the weight is less than 445. So here is the error interval. And that brings me to the end of this class. I hope you found this useful. And I'll see you in our next class.